Hey folks, Dr. Groovy here, Scott Grove of GroovyMusicLessons.com. Uh, today, yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to ring out a sound system. It is pretty much how it sounds. It will actually involve using an equalizer and actually hearing the frequencies ringing or feeding back and then getting them out. <laughs> okay, so um, the whole concept of ringing out the system is the fact, not the uh, fiction, <laughs> is that you have your main equalizer, say it's the 31 band, which is really, really, really what you need. Um, anything less and you're asking for trouble right away. Um, and I'll be using these speakers on sticks behind me, way back there. Um, so you're actually going to um, have one channel on your mixer that is just set flat, everything else muted. So by setting flat, uh, that means put everything straight up on zero, okay? And you don't need to do that on all the other mics, just mute them, okay? And I'll take it out front, uh, like I am, I'm out front of the PA system, and look towards PA while holding that microphone and take it out there, you know, in the room, um, a good halfway or three quarters of the way back, okay? And point the microphone towards your mouth and uh, not towards the speakers, <laughs> okay? And we're simply gonna be changing frequencies one at a time and trying to find um, frequencies that are problems. Okay, so because there's going to be problem frequencies that are going to ring and ring and feedback and all that stuff. And we need to get rid of those. Your equalizer is not, no matter who's told you what, it's not supposed to be set in a smile like this and lots of lows, lots of highs and swooped out like that. Um, that's a bad thing. Your equalizer is actually meant to do exactly what I said, to um, sit there basically flat. Right, everything right in the middle um, until you can find problem frequencies and then you bring those down until you no, no longer have a problem. So the thing we need to do is to do everything I've said before and get somebody out front and somebody to operate the equalizer if your um, gear is on stage, okay? And somebody to sit there and talk and make noises and sing notes and go ch ch and all this kind of stuff to actually force the PA to try to um, make feedback or noises in any register of uh, the spectrum of sound. Uh, we don't want to cut any frequency totally out because some instruments will really need those, okay? So to totally cut a frequency off uh, should never ever happen under any circumstance. Um, so what we're going to do is turn up the sound system with the one mic as loud as you think you would ever need it for that gig, okay? Um, not just the vocal mic that you're using, not judging by how loud you think the mic will need to be, but how much power, because you'll get used to this, but how much power you think you'll be using via um, using that one microphone. So what it would, you gotta think of in your head, uh, what it would sound like if four people were singing harmony all at the same time and the band was playing and so forth. So you might um, have to actually get on the mic and go <coughs> this kind of thing to actually simulate drums and so forth and try to find problems with low ringing things that are going to happen during sound check. So what we're actually uh, accomplishing here is tuning the room okay you notice how everything sounds different in each different room you play in um, things will be unheard that you had too much of you know at the last gig things sound weird on stage compared to the you know week before or what have you so each room is going to sound different okay so you're just going to notch um, a couple things differently than you did at the last gig. Again, nothing is going to be boosted. 
There's no reason to boost anything. Why are they capable of boosting on the EQ? Um, that's a whole different ball game. That's for um, if you want to add something to a kick drum or a bass guitar or something else, if you want to insert an equalizer into something in order to get more control over it than the frequencies on the mixing board will give you. So that's kind of where it comes in handy. Um, so we're going to go ahead and ring this thing out, show you how it works. And um, just right here in the living room, we'll find out how uh, bad the <laughs> living room is uh, set up for this PA system behind me. Okay, so catch you behind the EQ. Okay, so here's our equalizer. Everything is set flat directly in the middle. There are indentations so that they get directly in the center. And uh, I want to remind you that um, when we get ready to do this, uh, your equalizer output level should not determine how loud your system is. Okay? You should actually hear and adjust it so that when you hit the bypass on the EQ and when you hit, um, when you talk into it, it makes zero difference in level with or without the EQ engaged. So after we do cutting the frequencies, we might need to turn the level of the EQ up in order to make it as loud as it was before we cut the frequencies. Okay, makes sense. Um, it, nothing here is meant to make anything louder. You make those adjustments um, at your crossover or on your power amps. Okay, or on just the general master on your mixing board. Okay, so I have things up and we're going to see how loud I actually need this gig to be. Uh, I'm using actually what I just told you not to do, but from back here, uh, the volume on the EQ to get it back up where I had it. So. Okay, there. Okay. There we go. Okay, we're hearing all kinds of nastiness. And that's what we need to hear. Okay, is that as loud as I want to be? Um, let's say yes. That's how loud we need to be. You hear that high one wanting to take off already. And how you find out those. Okay, so this is the sound. You can do that from all the way across the room. Somebody could be on stage and just go. And it'll start to take off. Okay. So nowhere near it. So it'll give you a little hints on things to find those out. And I know exactly what these frequencies are going to be because they're almost always the same. Okay, and when you get to the low ones, okay, I'll make it so the high part is ringing. Okay, since the high one is driving me nuts, um, you'll get used to this. I'm going to tell you right now that thing's going to be at somewhere between 4K and 6.3 up here on the EQ. If you're looking on your phone, uh, shame on you. Look on something where you can actually see I'm not zooming in. So it's going to be 5K. I've just heard that frequency so many times that I know that's what it's going to be. So I'm going to turn it up, not down. I'm going to make sure that's the one that's driving me nuts. So I'm not going to leave it up much because it's going to go crazy. So as I'm talking, there it is. I just boosted it up for a second. And that's it. If I shut it all the way off, Two, one, check, two, one. Okay, now um, 
what we have is that is gone because I shut it all the way off on the equalizer. And that's not good because that frequency is really needed. It's just not needed to feed back. Okay, so we'll start adding that back in until we hear the feedback again and shut it down just enough to make it quit. Okay, so it's down about three decibels. The thing to remember here, I'll get off the microphone so you can actually understand what I'm saying, since we have such a dilemma with the PA right now, is on the 31 band EQs, it's nice to have this many frequencies or more. <laughs> they make a third octave EQs that actually give you all the frequencies in between these frequencies. So you go from like 8K, then the 10K, but it'll give you 9. But what happens here is the frequencies on both sides of the one we're messing with, we're messing with 5K, okay? So 4K and 6.3K are also affected when you turn down 5K, okay? It will shut the other frequencies down all the way over to 4K and all the way up to 6.3. So you got, you know, 4.1K, 4.2K, 4. it takes all those and brings them down with it and actually affects both frequencies on either side of it. So remember that you might have to actually uh, touch down one of these other frequencies because 6.3 is a bear. Okay, I'm just going to turn it up a little bit just for shits and giggles. That was just going up three decibels without me even talking in the mic. Okay, but I'm not having problems with it, so I'm not going to mess with it. It's not going crazy. I could go. Uh, there's a slight bit of that. So I'll go down just a hair. Okay, so that one's basically gone. Now we've got this nasty low mid thing going on. like this, like going and try to find out what's ringing. Okay, I know what that is. Okay, that's going to be right around 100 or 125 hertz. Okay, let's find out what it is. I won't even talk in it. I'll turn 100 up. Okay, that's not the one because it's really trying hard to go there, but I have to turn it almost all the way up. But I can tell it's going to be 125. That's actually the problem. There it is. So make sure you have the right one. So I'm going to get rid of that one by three decibels or one line. Two, two. Okay, and the thing to know, um, all you musicians out there that know that A equals 440, okay? Um, that also means that other A notes um, are going to be divisible. So if you have 440, 220, 110, you know, 880, anything divisible by 2. Um, over and over, it's going to be another A, just a different octave. So you have a frequency here of the one we just did, which was 125. Okay, if there's a problem still, but just an octave higher, 125 times 2 is 250. Right there is 250. So we just had a problem with 125. So we're going to check it. 
see how it is just by turning it up while we're talking to 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 um, that particular one was not in the um, spectrum that was bothering us. Yes, it will feed back, but that means it is not supposed to be turned up other than ringing out the PA system. Is this something that we are hearing here? No, that's not something that is hurting us, so we leave it where it's at at zero. Okay. Now we're going to look for something else. Okay, there's 125 shut completely off. I don't have that problem at all now. But we do need that frequency. For music, you can't kill anything 100%. So I'm going to bring it in until it becomes a problem. So now that you found make that humming noise and turn it down until that whole that noise is gone. Okay, it's gone. So you get it to there. Now, two, one, two, 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 two. Okay, see that one's gone. Okay, I'm looking for other problems. Okay, first problem is using a PA like I just showed you, just two, two speakers on sticks on each side or whatever you're using. Um, those speakers will not handle 31.5k or 32 and 25 hertz or 20 hertz or whatever so you're using way a ton of power with the PA trying to make those frequencies and actually recreate them so that's a big thing to learn is find out what your speakers will actually reproduce and everything below that shut them off so these two low ones I know those speaker cabinets will not even do 40 hertz, but I'm going to shut those two off. Okay, those are off. Um, will 40 make a difference at all to ooh, 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 ooh. slightly? It does make a difference, so I'll leave it on. Okay, so we're just going to check now to, to, and see what's actually given us problems. So 40, mm, 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 nope, I'm going up with them and seeing if something takes off, meaning feedback, it takes off. That's your official lingo. 50 hertz, two, 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 two. 63, two, 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 two. There's some frequencies like 630 hertz that are just nasty and you're gonna want that gone a bit. You'll see when we get there. Um, because think of it this way, we had to get rid of 125, double that up and you get the 250, double that up, you get 500, okay, and that gets you right around close to 630, so that whole area is a problem, because uh, we had a problem down here, and then divisible by two, then again, uh, double it up again and you're going to have problems with those frequencies probably as well. Okay, let's go to, I think we did 80 hertz, 2, 2, 2, 2, 100, 2, 2, 2. Okay, we're making it feedback, but um, that's not what we're talking about. We're not having a problem with it. We're creating a problem by pushing it up. Two. Okay, because we're, we're going to want that for some kick drum, bass, all that. So we want our low frequencies if we can keep them. Okay, 160, since we already dipped out 125. Two, 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 two. Can you hear it? We're not having a problem with that frequency, so. Next one, two, 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 one, two, two. So, two, 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 two. 
Try to sing the note that the feedback creates. Okay, so here's the note. I'm turning it up to show you. So at zero, I don't have any problem with that frequency, so I'm good. 250 is going to do what? 250, 250. Okay, that's nasty. <laughs> But is it nasty because I'm turning it up? 250, I'm up 3 dB. Yeah, it takes off pretty quickly. So I'm gonna take that down just a pube. <laughs> um, because I can imagine it taking off. I just turned it down one or two decibels. Okay, 315, 22. If you take it up, it's gonna show you what it does. I'm not having a problem with that. Okay, next one up is 400 hertz. Turning it up as I'm checking. I didn't have a problem really with it to begin with. 500 hertz, let's hear it. Yeah, that's nasty. Um, like I told you, when we get up around 500 and 630, we're going to have problems because we did a cut here a little bit ago. Okay, so we're going to go 500 again. That one takes off really quickly. Two, two, two. I'm only two, two, three decibels up, and it's doing that. So I'm going to back it off just a cube. Here comes the nasty 630. Okay, that one. I just naturally go um, to uh, 125, and then I go up to 630 two, two, and, uh, every time, because I know it's going to be nasty. Two, 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 two. You always hear that at all the gigs. So I'm bringing it down to two, two. Why am I singing that note? Because it's that note. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to touch it down just a little bit because I know it's a problem. 800. Okay, it took a long time or a long travel to here to make it happen. Now, 800, 1K. 1.25, all the way up to 2K. Um, these are where your vocals, your guitar, your piano, all of the intelligibility of anything you're doing happens. Okay? Everybody fights over these frequencies. Guitar, 800 to 1K. That um, mid-range thing, that's what everybody fights for. Um, again, any two instruments or vocals or whatever, anything that shares a frequency, they cancel each other out. So that is determined at the mixing board. Okay? Even though if we took down 125, 125 hertz, you can actually put it back in on a uh, instrument via the equalizer up there. Okay, per channel. So just because we cut it a little bit don't mean it's gone forever. You can force it back in and that will not allow this to take off. It might have to be pulled back just a slight bit more if it creates a problem. And don't forget, when people start crowding into a room, everything changes. Unless you understand that um, the horns on a sound system and the mid-range, uh, just like in the cabinets up here. Mm -hmm. Okay, the horns on those are a little over seven feet in the air, as are the mid-range right at the top of the three-way cabinets. Okay, so if you have that, um, people are going to be able to hear just fine everywhere. But if they're lower, 
Um, you're going to have huge, huge problems with the high end, nobody being able to hear it. Um, the more people that come in. Okay, let's keep on going up. We just did, we're coming up to 1K. Okay, let's check it out. Two, 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 two. Never had a problem with that, which is great. We'll leave it alone. 1.25. That's a nasty frequency if it feeds back, but I had to turn it almost wide open to get it to take off. 1.6, going up, going up. No problem. Starting now, we're going to have problems, which sucks because these are the great frequencies. 2K, 2, 2, 2, 2. two. But I had to go a long way to make that happen. 2.5. No, we're still good. Um, our vocals are going to sound fine. 3.15. No, I still had to go a long way to make that happen, so it's fine in the middle. 4K. Same thing, we're good. Amazing. 5K. Okay, I hate to get rid of that, but I have to. Again, it's um, that one that we did earlier that we already took out, so it would shut up from feeding back. So I just put it back to where it was. 6.3 is going to feed back. I just moved it a pube and it took off. Yeah, I'm making kind of a T sound. For the high frequencies. Okay, that's 6.3 still. Okay, a little wet, I had to go away. Eight. Uh, it gets to go away a little bit. Love the frequency, but 10K. Hey, you can hear the hiss. But had to get, take it down to flat. 12.5. Nice and crispy. We will use that up at the mixing board. Uh, we're still having a little problem with 5K and 6.3. Notch them down just a little more. And 16. No problem there. 20. It'd have to be a dog to hear that. Does it make any difference on this system? I'm just listening to the hiss of the PA. Yes, it does. It works, so I'll leave it flat. Okay, let's see where we're at. Two, 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 two. We have that one frequency right there. Sounds bad. So I'll find it. Okay, so it was too low. See if you could hear that. I was trying 200, but that frequency was too low. I just simply moved it up to see if it would take off. But you hear what it actually sounds like. So I'll try 315. 250. Okay, it was right between 315 and 400. There it is. 
got rid of 315. Okay, and we are done. Okay, the object here is not to make the microphone sound good. That is not the point at all. Okay, so again, on the mixing board, we're gonna make the microphone sound good. Okay, so I'm going, so um, I'll come to you from here. The thing is, is what we just did, like I said, it is not to make the microphone sound good. It is simply to notch out, take the frequencies that suck and are feeding back and getting rid of those. Not completely at all. Like I showed you, they're only coming down like half a decibel, two decibels, three decibels, whatever it takes to make it stop. Okay. Yeah, sure. All the way down makes it stop, but it leaves a big hole in the way things sound. Every frequency needs to be there, okay, in this stage of the game anyway, except for the ones that cannot be reproduced. Again, those really low frequencies that these speakers will not handle, that will make your um, power amps um, try to overheat because they're trying to recreate those frequencies that these speakers cannot reproduce. So. That amp's just trying real hard to make it happen, but the speaker's fighting back saying, no, 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 and you get a fight going, and uh, <laughs> there's going to be trouble. So eliminate that trouble by shutting those frequencies off that your stuff can't handle. Okay, and again, your mic isn't supposed to sound good. It's just there to ring out the frequencies that are causing trouble in the room. That's the only reason we ring out the PA system, okay? So that there will not be that problem later on. This is not saying that if a lead singer steps out um, with a wireless mic, that it's not gonna feed back, um, because it very well might, because here in a little bit, then we're gonna go up to the channel of the, you know, lead singer's microphone and we're going to put some highs in it and make it sound real nice and sweet and blah blah blah. Um, it isn't how we're making his microphone sound that is what we're after yet and this does not assure that it's not going to feed back. All we're doing here again is taking away problem frequencies in the room, how the room is tuned. So what we are actually doing, what it's called, is tuning the room, okay? Different places that are built different, the structure, um, hallways, corridors, parks that are slanted, and so forth, um, just require this to happen. Um, you'll have a couple frequencies, like uh, that 630, and some, that 125 is really nasty. But 630 is always nasty. Um, 5K, 6.3, those are um, always going to be high end problems, but you really want those because that's a huge part of um, the high end vocal clarity. And like on pianos and so forth, it gives it all the sparkle and so forth. So. Don't get rid of it, but like I said, you can still add it again at the channel on the mixing board. Uh, we're not working on that today. We're working on notching out frequencies. So I hope that makes sense. And another thing to do before you put uh, all this to bed is to actually go and take your microphone and go all the way to the stage. behind the PA system. So you go behind the PA and you might find a couple low more you know a couple more low frequencies that are going to feed back. It'll be the low ones. Um, but you don't want those to take off here in a little bit when you start doing drums and you start doing other things. Um, so you might find another frequency or two that need to be dialed back just a hair. Again, we're not here to hurt the sound of the instruments or the vocals. We're here to fix the sound of a problem. 
problematic room. So that's the whole deal here. Uh, a lot of people just, like I said, try to make their whole band sound good by boosting up some more lows and boosting up some more highs in the main EQ. It's not what it's for. Okay? It's only to cut the problem frequencies. So maybe that'll wake some of you up to what it's actually for. Okay? Again, all the nice and little knobs on every channel, that's to make everything sound good. Okay? Um, so, will there still be feedback throughout the night? Huh? Could be. Why not? <laughs> uh, you're not taking care of feedback here. You're taking care of, um, again, problems with the room. You'll do a sound check and see if there's feedback and control it via each channel. Okay? So, that's the way that was. So, again, go out front, uh, halfway, two-thirds of the way, back in the room, microphone, check all the frequencies. Um, be with the, have your guy on stage if he's on stage where the main EQ is. And he sits there and checks each Thing and you guys get your routine together of the guy going, you know, everything that needs to be done. And then, so the guy with the EQ will know what you're after. You know, he'll, you, he can even have a mic and say, okay, uh, here comes 80 hertz. And the guy out front should know to go, ooh, 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 and, you know, Boost it up, let them float up, woo, the actual note of the feedback. Sing it back, woo, woo, and see if that makes it take off when it's flat or not. If it's fine when it's flat, that's what you want to do. You want to keep as many frequencies flat as humanly possible. Okay? You should only end up with maybe uh, half a dozen or so is average frequencies that need to be cut just a little bit. Okay, so that's that. And again, go behind the PA system also with the mic and just check because things can really take off from back there as well because that's part of the room. Okay, your microphone is going to be there at the end or at the beginning of the night anyway, so or at the end of this whole sound check thing. Um, so might as well have it where it's actually going to be located and sound bounces off that off the back wall bounces back off to the stage wall and back out sometimes you have curtains on stage which are nice for some kind of acoustic treatment uh, but if you don't things are going to change just a little bit that way and remember you can do the same thing with your monitor EQs but they're used in a different way actually so I'll stick with the main EQ for this one. Monitors, uh, different story. Okay, so you guys be groovy, and that's how you ring out your main EQ. Take care, um, and may all your gigs go groovy. <laughs>